What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to identify congruent shapes and figures, all right? And before jumping into this, you should be familiar with transformations, all right? And specifically, translations, reflections, and rotations. Those are kind of the big three that we cover with this topic, all right? So if you need a refresher on those, uh, I'll link those in the description below. But if you think you're good, let's just jump straight into it, all right? So first of all, what does congruent even mean? So congruent figures have the exact same size and shape, right? So for just a, an easy example, uh, these two squares right here, uh, yeah, that's pretty close, are congruent, okay? Because they have the exact same size and shape, right? These two squares right here are not congruent, right? Because one's little and one's gigantic, okay? So even though they're the same shape, Remember, they have to be the same size also, okay? And then these two squares right here actually are congruent, okay? Because as you can see, they have the same size and they are the same shape. The only difference, or the only thing I did here was rotate this one, right? Like 45 degrees or so, okay? But as you can still see, it's the exact same size and the same shape, right? So let's jump into these examples right here. All right, let's try and figure out which of these are congruent. So let's start with this triangle up here. So BIG. So is triangle BIG congruent with any other triangle uh, over here? And it actually is, all right? So it's congruent with this one down here, OLE. OLE. Okay, now how do I know that these are congruent? Well, it looks like all you had to do was take this shape and then rotate it about the origin, right? Remember the origin's right here at zero comma zero. All we did really was rotate it around this whole freaking thing to there, okay? Uh, or another way that we could do that is we could just rotate this triangle and we could draw it, you know, maybe like this. We could rotate it like that, okay? It's still the exact same shape, right? I just basically rotated it in that direction, 180 degrees. And then we just kind of translated it all the way down here, right? So you can still see they're the exact same size and shape. Okay, cool. So these two right here are congruent. And the symbol for congruence is a little squiggly with uh, an equal sign underneath it, okay? So B-I-G is congruent to O-L-E. Okay, let's see what else we can find. So uh, let's just go to this next triangle right here. So F-A-T, triangle F-A-T is... Anything congruent to triangle FAT? Uh, well, there is, right? It'd be this triangle right here. So this triangle is KAR. KAR. All right, now the way we can tell that they're congruent is well, first of all, they're the same size and shape, right? So they're the same size, right? So this length right here is four, and then the shorter side is two. Same thing over here, right? This, li this length right here is four, and this one's two, okay? And the hypotenuse of the triangles also look like they're the same size, right? And now to get from one triangle to the other, it's basically a reflection across the x-axis, all right? And remember, for a reflection, all the points have to be the same distance away from the line of reflection right here, okay? So for example, this point right here, F, is two spaces away from the line of reflection, and K is two spaces away from the line of reflection also, right? Here, T is two spaces, and R is two spaces, right? And then here, A is four spaces away, and this A is also four spaces away, okay? So these two triangles are definitely congruent to one another. Okay, now uh, another easy one that we can get out of the way is this square right here. So D-A-S-H, right? So D-A square D-A-S-H. Now this one is congruent with this square up here, right? I-A-N-S, right? So it's congruent with I-A-N-S. Okay, so again, you can see that these triangles, or sorry, these squares are basically two by twos, right? So this one's a two by two, and this one's a two by two. And before I forget, in order to map or move one square onto the other square, all we need to do is slide it over, right? We don't have to rotate it or anything. So that is a translation, right? And in order to figure out how many spaces we have to move it, all you need to do is track a single point. Okay, so let's pick point A right here because it's in the top right. And then let's see how many spaces we have to move uh, this point to get to this point A because it's also in the top right. Okay, so then we would just have to move over to the right four units and then we'd have to move up vertically 
nine units. Okay, so then the translation would just be four units to the right, nine units up. Okay, now what about this big square down here? So is this big square congruent with these two smaller squares? No, it's not, right? Because again, it is the same shape. They're both, they're all squares, but this one's a lot bigger, right? This is a three by three, okay? So this is not congruent with the two smaller squares, okay? Uh, what about this triangle right here? So triangle EAT, right? So this one is not congruent with any triangle, right? Because as you can see, this is a, the shorter sides of the triangle are three and three, right? They're both three units long. So even though it does look like this triangle that we first went over, right? Uh, these were only two by twos, right? This is a two and this is two also, okay? So this triangle is not congruent with any other triangle. And then lastly, we can see we have these uh, like trapezoids, right? This one and this one, okay? Are these congruent? So this one down here is uh, S-M-E-L, right? S-M-E-L. And we're trying to see if it's congruent with this one up here. Well, it looks like they're the same shape, right? So this long side is three units long. The short side is one unit long, right? So three units long, one unit long. And then it's two units tall, right? Two units tall. And then we have our uh, diagonal piece right there. Okay, so it does look like they're the same size and shape, right? So how would you get from one of these trapezoids to the other? How would you map it onto the other one? Well, one thing we, you could do here is you could reflect this one, or it, really you could start with either one. I'll just start with this one down here. You could reflect this trapezoid along the Y axis right here, okay? So then if I do that, I would have something that looks like this, right? So this point would be this point right here, and then this point over here, let's see, it's one, two, three, four spaces away from the line of reflection, right? So one, two, three, four spaces away, okay? And then here, this is one, or sorry, one, two, three spaces away. So one, two, three spaces away. And then L over here is four spaces away, right? So four spaces away. Okay, so just play connect the dots right there. Boom, 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 okay? So I just reflected this trapezoid across the Y axis right here. So then I get this shape, okay? And then if I reflect this trapezoid across the x-axis one more time, then I would land at this shape over here, right? Okay, because you can see that this long side right here is six spaces away from the line of reflection, right? And this long side right here is six spaces away from the line of reflection, right? And then uh, this is two units long, this is two units long, right? So you can see the whole thing matches up as uh, being reflected across the x-axis right there, okay? So then we can say that these two tra uh, trapezoids, this one right here, S-M-E-L and L-B-A-D, uh, L-B-A-D, are in fact congruent. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.